our brave adventurer is sneaking up on an unsuspecting foe, hugging the rocky wall for cover. But he failed to notice the enemies on the plateau, right above his head. Hi, I'm that Italian guy, and today we are going to see how to achieve height-based line of sight in Foundry VTT. This is what our wall layout looks like at a glance. We are going to go through the setup process together in a moment. Before we do that, though, a forward on a module I am going to use in this video, DF Architect. This module, and its dependencies, provide us with a bunch of additional features when setting up our scenes. In this video we are going to concentrate on the extra tools to draw and modify walls included with DF Architect. The most evident benefits when drawing walls with DF Architect are the ability to toggle snap to grid, to quickly place straight walls for man-made buildings, and the ability to lock wall chaining. This reverts the default foundry setting that requires you to press down the control key to draw consecutive wall sections. As you can see, it becomes much easier to place multiple walls in a row. This is especially useful when drawing complex shapes. Force snap to grid is exactly what the name says. I just need to click in the general proximity of a grid vertex to have the wall automatically snap to it. There's a link to the module in the video's description. Let's get to the main topic of this video. As you can see, the wall configuration itself is very simple, a pair of terrain wall sections, one at the base of the obstacle, and one at the top. The trick to achieve height-based line of sight in Foundry is to use specific settings on both of these sections. Once we have drawn the bottom wall section following the base of the site blocking obstacle, we can click and drag select them all and change two parameters. We are going to set the sound restriction to none, and we are setting the wall direction to right or left. This setting changes based on the way you have placed your walls. The important detail is that the small arrow drawn on the wall has to point from the bottom to the top of the obstacle. The topmost wall section is set up the same way, but we also change the movement restriction to none since we only want this wall to affect line of sight. This way, the player token at the bottom of the plateau is unable to move upwards, without the DM's help, and can only see up to the point where the topmost wall has been drawn. The NPC tokens at the top of the plateau have their sight unblocked and can move downwards freely, including through the bottom wall. But once they are down, they are affected by the walls the same way the player was. In this example, the NPC tokens are not vision enabled, to save resources, so their line of sight is never going to be blocked by walls. Also, the reason we are able to see the walls even if we have moved to the actors' layer is because of another feature from DF Architect. By playing around with the shape and length of the two terrain wall sections, you can fine-tune how the obstacle is affecting line of sight for whoever is at the bottom. This is especially useful when the obstacle does not have a uniform height throughout its length, like the plateau from this example. As you can see, I've kept my wall sections quite simple. This is by design, the height-based line of sight is created by the intersection between two different terrain wall pieces, so having a more wavy line could potentially cause artifacts in your line of sight. Experimentation is key. Of course, you can make the bottom of the obstacle climbable by setting the movement restriction to none on one or more sections of the bottom wall. This is useful for bushes or other obstacles high enough to block line of sight, but not enough to impede movement. And now, let's talk a bit about troubleshooting. As you can see in this other example, our player token is correctly able to see one NPC token on top of the cliff, because it is placed between the bottom and top terrain wall sections, and it is unable to see the other two because they are placed behind the top section and as such, they are too far from the ledge. But there is a problem with the leftmost top section, the player token is able to see through it, do you notice anything wrong with that section? Have a look at the direction the small arrow on it is pointing towards. This wall is only supposed to work in one direction, and this is what it is doing, but it's doing it backwards. The interesting part is that all of these sections have been set up with a mass edit, and their direction value in the tooltop is the same. The problem is tied to what I mentioned at the start of the video. Foundry walls have an innate left and right direction that is based on the way you first draw that section. To put it another way, these innate directions are determined by which end of the wall you have placed first. The fix is easy enough, reverse the direction of the wall so that the arrow on it is consistent with the rest of the sections. 
The real solution, though, is to be careful when drawing monodirectional walls and keep placing them following the same flow, left to right or right to left. As you can see, the line of sight has now been correctly displayed for our player token. Hope you enjoyed! Once again, I'm that Italian guy. Stay tuned for more guides and tips for Foundry VTT. Until next time.